The image of a very large spacecraft landing by gliding down a runway more than a decade ago is likely still an unforgettable memory for all us space enthusiasts. But that doesn't mean we can no longer have a chance to witness such an awesome spectacle. The technology of the space shuttle has been reinvented for the modern era under the name Dream Chaser. Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before we get into today's content, we just want to let you know, first, thanks for checking out this video. We are very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy space news and analysis like this, please press that subscribe button, and that way you'll never miss out on any of our daily videos. Now, let's get into today's news. NASA's space shuttle program was a cornerstone of the Space Transportation System STS initiative proposed in 1969 to create a reusable spacecraft to make space travel more cost-effective and accessible. Unlike previous single-use capsules, space shuttle was designed with a versatile space plane in mind that could launch like a rocket, operate in orbit as a spacecraft, then come back down to Earth as a glider landing on a runway. Space Shuttle consisted of three main components, the orbiter vehicle, where the crew and payload were housed, the external fuel tank, which provided fuel to the orbiter's main engines during launch, and then the solid rocket boosters, which provided the additional thrust needed to escape Earth's gravity. The shuttle's design included ceramic tiles for thermal protection during re-entry, allowing the spacecraft to get reused for multiple missions. Over its 30-year operational period, the Space Shuttle program achieved many milestones, including the launch and repair of numerous satellites, the deployment of the Hubble Space Telescope, and the construction and servicing of the ISS. However, the program also faced some challenges, notably the tragic losses of the Challenger in 1986 and then Columbia in 03. These accidents, which resulted in the very unfortunate death of 14 astronauts, highlighted critical design flaws and underscored the risks inherent in human spaceflight. The investigation into the Columbia disaster revealed serious issues with the shuttle's thermal protection system and NASA's management processes. As a result, the Columbia Accident Investigation Board recommended the retirement of the shuttle fleet. Coupled with the high costs of maintaining and operating an aging spacecraft, the decision was made to retire the space shuttle in 2011. Following the shuttle's retirement, NASA relied on Russia's Soyuz spacecraft to transport astronauts to and from the ISS until the advent of SpaceX's Crew Dragon in 2020. Since then, Dragon and Soyuz have taken turns transporting astronauts to the ISS, but this past year, Dragon's primarily taken on the role. Starliner was also intended by NASA to share these missions with Dragon, but that key seems to be rusted and no longer viable for future use. Regardless, a space plane remains an idea that NASA is still intrigued by. Since the retirement of NASA's space shuttle, there have been significant advancements in space technology that have reignited interest in space planes as a viable means of space travel. Innovations in material science, propulsion systems, and aerodynamics have led to the development of spacecraft that are not only safer, but also more efficient and cost-effective. Traditional space capsules, like those used in the Apollo and Soyuz programs, are typically single-use vehicles that require extensive resources to retrieve and replace after each mission. In contrast, reusable space planes can get flown multiple times, and that cuts the overall cost of getting up to space. This reusability, combined with lower maintenance costs and the ability to land on regular conventional runways, makes space planes an attractive option for both the government agencies and private companies looking to reduce expenses associated with space exploration. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser stands out as a leading example of the modern space plane. Building on the lessons learned from the shuttle program, Dream Chaser incorporates the latest advancement in heat-resistant materials, aerodynamics, and propulsion technology. Designed to be a versatile and reliable vehicle, Dream Chaser is capable of both crewed and uncrewed missions, making it a flexible solution for a variety of space ops. Its ability to land on standard runways allows for immediate access to cargo and crew, further enhancing its efficiency and usability. Sierra Space is currently preparing for the first flight of its spacecraft named Tenacity. That's a cargo variant of the DC-100 space plane model, aimed at revolutionizing space cargo transport. DC-100 model boasts several innovative design features that enhance both its performance and safety. One advancement is the use of larger heat-resistant tiles, which provides superior protection during re-entry. Despite being only a quarter the size of the shuttle orbiter, Stream Chaser's heat shields are larger, measuring approximately 10 by 10 inches compared to the 6 by 6 inch tiles used by NASA. Similar to the Space Shuttle, each tile in Dream Chaser is uniquely designed, but the vehicle requires just over 2,000 individual tiles. 
This is a big reduction compared to the approximately 30,000 tiles needed for each space shuttle, and that greatly simplifies the replacement process following each flight. Each tile on the space plant is made from a more durable material than those used on NASA spacecraft, though they are still primarily consisting of silica. Most of the white materials visible on the space shuttle were thermal blankets rather than tiles. As newer orbiters were built, the vehicles tended to use more thermal blankets to reduce their weight. Dream Chaser features both black and white tiles, while Sierra Space, noting that the primary difference between the two tiles, lies in the special additives used in the outer glass coating. Unlike the space shuttle, which required certain parts of the orbiter to be reinforced to withstand re-entry temps, such as the nose and the leading edges of the wings, NASA used specialized tiles made from reinforced carbon-carbon, or RCC, in those areas to endure those higher temps. In contrast, Dream Chaser does not have RCC tiles. Its standard tiles can withstand temperatures up to 2600 Fahrenheit for multiple re-entry cycles, while the specialized tiles can endure even higher temperatures for single-use applications. These tiles serve multiple purposes. In addition to protecting the vehicle during re-entry, they help regulate the spacecraft's internal temperature when exposed to direct sunlight. Temperatures can reach up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit in daylight conditions in orbit. The tiles help maintain a stable temperature for experiments and eventually for the humans inside. Complementing the DC-100 is the Shooting Star Cargo Module, which extends the space plane's cargo capacity. It's a 15-foot-long attachment to the back of the Dream Chaser that can carry up to 10,000 pounds of additionalized pressurized and unpressurized cargo, such as scientific equipment and supplies to the ISS during NASA resupply missions. The Shooting Star Module is designed not only for cargo transport, but also for waste disposal. During its mission, it can handle critical waste before separating and burning up upon re-entry, thereby maintaining the cleanliness of space operations. The launch and re-entry process for Dream Chaser is meticulously engineered to ensure safety and efficiency. Initially, the spacecraft and its shooting star module are encapsulated within a payload fairing on a rocket, protecting them from debris and reducing the ascent load. Once in space, the rocket deploys the Dream Chaser, which then unfolds its wings and solar panels to enter flight configuration. It'll then extend its landing gear and test its systems in performance before docking. These tests include successful communication with the ISS and following its commands, such as holding position and retreating when requested. Just before docking, it will stop 38 feet from the station and wait for the Canadarm2 robotic arm to grab a fixture on the cargo module. Upon completing its mission, the spacecraft comes back to Earth with the shooting star module detaching and burning up in the atmosphere while the DC-100 lands on the runway. This design allows for a quick recovery of valuable cargo and facilitates efficient turnaround for future missions. Future flights may carry up to 11,500 pounds of cargo, bringing back up to 3,500 pounds of cargo to Earth and be ready for launch again in just 24 hours. After docking with the station, it stays there for 45 days before being detached. It'll then wait for an opportunity to return home where the weather and landing conditions are favorable. The Shooting Star module detaches and burns up in the atmosphere, while Dream Chaser lands on a runway. The onboard computers will commit to the return flight path, and the spacecraft will glide to the landing point at the launch and landing facility at Kennedy Space Center. Of course, that assumes that all goes according to plan. Now, the spacecraft is in its final testing and launch preparation phase at the KSC in Florida. Inside the Space Systems Processing Facility, where components of the ISS were once housed, the Dream Chaser is undergoing some pretty extensive work. This includes the installation of the thermal protection system to ensure it can withstand that re-entry, as well as a propulsion system closeout and leak testing. The launch date for Dream Chaser's first flight was initially scheduled this spring. However, it's been delayed. A new launch date has yet to be determined, but is expected to happen next year. Both Sierra Space Team and NASA are working tirelessly to make this launch happen. Looking forward to the future, Sierra Space is actively shaping the future of space exploration through a range of ambitious projects in collaboration. Building on the success of Dream Chaser's DC-100, the company is now working on the development of the DC-200, a space plane designed specifically for crewed missions. This next-gen spacecraft will be capable of safely transporting astronauts to and from LEO, offering a versatile and reliable solution for future human spaceflight. In addition to its spacecraft development, Sierra Space is a key partner in the Orbital Reef Project, an innovative space station initiative led by Blue Origin. A central component of the Orbital Reef project is the development of the Large Integrated Flexible Environment, or LIFE Habitat, a state-of-the-art expandable space structure designed by Sierra Space. 
The Life Habitat is essentially a three-story inflatable module that can be compactly stored during launch and then expanded in space to provide a spacious living and working environment for the astronauts. This innovative design maximizes usable space while minimizing launch costs, making it a key element in the future of space living. Beyond these commercial ventures, Sierra Spaces is also expanding its footprint in the defense sector. The company has secured several significant contracts, including a 10-year agreement with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency to develop lunar infrastructure capabilities. This project focuses on extracting oxygen and storing energy on the moon, which are critical for sustaining future lunar missions. Additionally, Sierra Space just got awarded a $740 million contract by the Space Development Agency to develop 18 missile warning and tracking satellites, further cementing its role in national security and defense. And that concludes today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.